So there's been a lot of news and talk about NFTs recently with Bebo making, you know, massive sales of NFTs, Kings of Leon releasing their albums as an NFT. So in this video, I'm going to talk about NFT for photographers. I'm going to start by talking about NFTs kind of at a high level. I'm not going to get into a lot of technical detail, but I need to kind of explain what they are and how they work and the concepts behind them to understand the rest of the video. Then I'll walk through it and I'll show you some real NFTs for sale. I'll show you how I sell my photos for NFTs. Lastly, I want to go through and take you through and show you exactly how to sell your photos as NFTs. And at the end of the video, I've got a massive announcement that you're going to want to stick around for. So what is an NFT? Well, it's a digital token that's easily verifiable by the blockchain. But what does that really mean, right? I think the easiest way to understand the concept is to compare it to something in real life. So I'm going to go through and just talk about a couple of examples about kind of these concepts of tokens that are easily verifiable. You know, the first example that most photographers probably know is the U.S. Copyright Office. Okay, so any photographer can take their photos and register them with the U.S copyright office and that gives you some sort of standing under US law. Now when you take your photos and you register them with the copyright office they give you a token and that token is easily verifiable. You can take that token and you can put it on the US copyright office website and you can see who registered it. So you're basically kind of saying you know this token was registered here and it's enforceable by US law. Okay, so in that particular case, it's verifiable by the US Copyright Office, but an NFT is not verifiable by any one person, it's verifiable by the blockchain. All right. Another example is domain names. Okay. You know, Google.com is a domain name. It's owned by Google. I personally own souvenirpixels.com. That's where I have all my photography. And I purchased that domain name from a reseller, but there's an organization that manages domain names and domain names are unique. If somebody else goes and tries to purchase souvenirpixels.com, they can't. Okay. This is actually a bit better example than the copyright because domain names are sellable on a market. Marketplace. I can take my domain name of souvenirpixels.com and sell it to someone else, which you can also do with NFTs. All right. The last example that you know photographers are probably familiar with are you know digital pr prints. Okay, not digital prints, but real prints. You know, I can take my photographs and I can go out and I can make prints. And let's say I do five of them. Now each of those prints is unique. You know, one of five, two of five, three of five. So. I can go and sell those prints and they are unique prints. And because I say that I won't be creating more prints, then they have more value. Okay. Because there's some scarcity to it. Now, this is a good example because if somebody comes and buys one of my prints, they can then, they then own that print and they can go ahead and resell it, right? So they can resell it privately to one of their friends. They can list it on a marketplace like Facebook marketplace, or they can even take it to an auction house. All of those things are also possible with NFTs. Okay. Now, one of the really cool things about NFTs though, as opposed to, you know, a print that you make of one of your photos is that it's a smart contract. It's a digital contract. And as part of that contract, you can put in there that when an NFT is sold, so when an NFT that represents one of your photos is sold, you can put in the contract that you get a cut, let's say 10%. So let's say, for example, you take one of your photos and you create an NFT of it. Now, maybe you sell that initial NFT for, let's say, $100. Somebody purchased that NFT. Well, as you become more and more famous as a photographer, that person is then able to take that unique NFT and sell it for $1,000. But if you put that you get a 10% cut of the resale of the NFT in the future, then you'll get another $100 when that sells for $1,000. If somebody sells it for $5,000 later on, you get $500. Now, this is amazing for photographers, right? Because as your portfolio grows, your NFTs in theory would become more and more value and you could keep getting revenue off them. Now, I know all this is kind of abstract. So what I'm going to do now is let's go through and take a look at some NFTs on a real NFT marketplace. Today, I'm going to be primarily be using OpenSea.io. It's the largest NFT marketplace out there right now. Think of it as like the eBay of NFTs. But there are other marketplaces out there that are quite large as well. Rarible, Mintbase, and there's more popping up all the time. Let's go take a look. 
All right, so when you first go into OpenSea, um, you'll see here that at the top, there's nothing here for photography yet. Now, hopefully that'll change in the future, but there are some photographers that go in here and do upload their photos. What I'm gonna do is I'll first take a look at, let's take a look at this Beeble Everydays. This is the one that sold for a ton of cash recently. I'm just gonna walk you through and show you what NFTs look like, just so you can kind of know what to expect. So there's a buy now button. I can go and buy this for almost half a million dollars if I want, but I won't do that. <laughs> You've got your section here for the details. You're able to enter that in. You know, there's an about section. There's more sections that you can add in here that people hasn't done. And I'll show you how to do that in the other ones. You can also see offers. So this is an example of showing information from the public blockchain. So you can see the offers here. And this is the history of it. So the trading history. So this is how it's publicly verifiable. You can go down here and see that this was created by people and you can see all the bids and how it's changed hands. That's how you know that it's unique because basically you can go through here and say, okay, who owns this token? And all of that is tracked on the blockchain. So to start my NFT collection, I've decided to sell NFTs of my raw files. So these photos that I've created NFTs for, they're photos that I created like seven or eight years ago. And these photos are already all over the web. They're on, you know, Flickr, they're on Instagram. I've uploaded them to the stock sites. You know, in some cases, these have been viewed, you know, millions of times, downloaded tens of thousands of times. And, you know, they've made me thousands of dollars in stock sales. So the question is, why would anybody buy the NFT? Well, you know, it's actually the same with like Beeple, right? He uploads his photos on Instagram and people buy those for millions of dollars. Now, personally, I'm no Beeple, right? I do not have that big of a following. So I decided to include my raw files as part of the NFT to make them more unique. Because although my photos, the JPEG versions, are all over the web, my raw files have been sitting on my computer and they've actually never left my computer before these NFTs were created. So these raw files actually are unique, right? They're not available and they contain more information than my JPEG files did. So I've got a package in there where I've got my raw files, you know, my original TIFF files, and then I include the JPEG that's also widely available. Now, one thing to know is that I'm not saying this is the right way to create NFTs. This is the way that I've decided to do it. Um, I don't think there really is a right way right now. This technology is so new that there's no way to know what the best way to do it. But the only thing you can do is experiment. And this is what I've decided to do for my first photos. You may decide to sell your NFTs differently and you'll be able to do this when I go through and do the demo of how you set up NFTs later on. And you know, I may even decide that this doesn't work and I may change the way that I sell NFTs next week, right? We're all going to need to experiment on how we sell our photos and NFTs to figure out kind of what works and what works for us in the type of photography that we do. Now, I've decided to use OpenSea to sell my NFTs. Um, there's other marketplaces out there that I've mentioned before, Rarible or Mintbase. Um, I've decided to use OpenSea because, you know, I like the way that they've got it set up. They're prices are quite low for being on the Ethereum blockchain. The Ethereum blockchain is really the main blockchain that people are using to sell their NFTs. So I wanted to be on that blockchain and it's pretty simple to set up. So I'm going to be walking you through how to set that up on OpenSea. It is similar on Rarible or some of the other ones. If you want me to create another video on Rarible or some of the other sites on how to create NFTs, something similar to this, just let me know in the comments. And if enough people are looking at it, um, I'll go and create more videos on some of those other sites. As well. So let's just get into luck about how you can create NFTs by going through and actually creating an NFT for sale. Now to be able to sell on OpenSea or really any of the other major platforms, you need to have an Ethereum wallet set up. Now there's lots of different options out there. I'm using MetaMask. If you're new to this, it's a pretty easy one to set up. It runs as a clone plugin. Not going to go too much into that because there's lots of you know resources out there that can show you how to set that up. Once you've set it up, you can go through and create your collection. Now I've created a collection here called Unique Stock, and this is my Unique Stock photos. Now the reason that I called it Unique Stock instead of like Souvenir Pixels, which is, you know, I have SouvenirPixels.com, my Instagram is SouvenirPixels, um, is that 
for collections, the first time you upload to collections, there's certain fees associated to it. But you can actually have multiple people in collections. So I'm kind of thinking ahead here. I'd actually like to be able to allow other photographers to more cheaply post photos to this collection and we can have a unique collection of photos. So that's why I've kind of set it up this particular way. But you can see here, I've so far, I've set up five different NFTs and they've got different prices. I'll talk about the different ways you can sell NFTs in OpenSea later on in the video. Okay, so one of the things you just do is go through, set up your connection. You can set up your collections for free. It doesn't cost any money to set those up. So once you have the collection, we've got a big button here. You can go through and add a new item. Okay, so this is the screen where you can go through and add a new item. The first thing you can do is you can add your photo here. You can also do videos up to 100 megabytes. So I'm going to go in here and this is the photo that I am going to sell. All right, so now we can go and enter a name. Right. Now you can also have an external link. If you want to put a link to your site, you can add it in here. I'm just going to leave it as is. Now the next section is the description. Now I've come up with like a format that I want for this description and I've just kind of put that into a Google sheet here. So I'm just going to do some cutting and pasting so you don't need me to uh, talk through it. But what I have here is I've just got some information about what's included in the unlockable content, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, you know, some additional information about the rights. And then I put keywords in here. One of the things that's not great about OpenSea, or really any of them right now, is they don't handle keywords well. That's something that, you know, can definitely be improved on. It's probably needed if you're going to look at selling photos for stock in any, any real way. Okay. Now the next thing we have here is properties. Now there's properties, levels, and stats. And these are shown differently based on the photo. So I'm going to jump out of here. Let's go back to my collections. I'll go to my unique stock collection. Let me show you how this works. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to actually click on view all. Okay, now this is something you need to think about. Most people have a fair number of photos and you want to think about how they're going to be viewed and organized. So if I take a look here, this is if me looking at the unique stock. Now I only have five photos here, but I know that I've got like, you know, 400 decent photos that I may want up here. So I want a way to organize them. So if you look down here on the left, Right? I've set up these different items and these are the properties. So I've got a category, creation date, location. Okay, So those are basically things you can tick off. So things that people may want to do when searching a photo. So if I wanted to go through and see all my vertical photos, which are shot in portrait, I can go there and show them. I can go through and choose, you know, all minor photos right now, but I plan to add in videos later on. So I could have photo or video types. I also have categories. So let's say somebody was coming through here and looking for landscapes. I can show only the landscape photos. So I specifically chose my categories in such a way that it'll make it easier for people to filter through my collection. To do that, I've gone through and I've added it to, again, just a, a simple spreadsheet here where I can go through and choose my categories. Okay. Now, one of the things to note about categories too is if you go into it, they're shown on the item. So if I come here, I can see properties. These are the properties in the big blue box and they show stats, right? Like 20% have this trait of Pitt Meadows. So there's some stats there and there's also the stats here. So I'm using the stats as my image height. Okay. So I can show the stats there. And if I go back to the collection and go into my view all, now I can go down here and the stats are actually shown as a slider. So this is how people could go through and they could filter the collection based on the size. So I can use this pixel height. If I want ones with larger pixels, I'm going to see the portrait ones. Okay. So again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is how I did it. You could totally set up your collection in a different way, but I wanted to set up this collection in such a way that you could handle a lot of photos and there's an easy way for buyers to go through and to go through and filter and look at the different photos that they could be interested in. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and I'll go and I'm going to go through and just add my properties. So the way you add your properties, I'm going to choose media type. That's my character. And then the next one will be photo. Okay. So I would recommend just kind of doing this the way I did. It's an easy way to organize it, especially if you plan on creating multiple F NFTs. I just put in a spreadsheet and I'm cutting and pasting. Again, this is something that having a set way to organize this is obviously a way that would be useful for photographers in the future. Um, it's something that again, we're looking at at Fortaloo. Usage, this is something that can be used for commercial usage. Again, I know a lot of people buy my stuff for stock, so I put that in there. Okay. 
All right, now I've got my properties in. Now I'm not using levels. Levels, you know, they could, could be used for something like, let's say like you have characters. If you go around and play on here, a lot of people have like different pictures of people. And so level someone could be handsome or pretty or whatever. And then you show as a slider on the bar. I decided not to use those in mine though. All right, so last I'm just gonna put the stats. Now you can have a value like three of five, but for the stats, if you set it to zero, it'll just choose the max one. So that's what I want it to do. So the pixel width is gonna be my first level, which I have here. Like I just leave that of zero. And the next one I'm gonna choose is the pixel height. Now I save it. Now the next thing is the unlockable content, okay? So I am providing people with my raw files. So if somebody purchases this, they will get access to the raw files of this photo. So I have uploaded that to a server. Now again, this is an area that will probably be improved on in the future, but right now I've just uploaded that to a specific place on the web where someone can go through and download it, okay? And the supply currently on OpenSea, you can only have a supply of one, but that is something that, you, that will be increased in the future. And that's it. I can now go through, click create, and it will go through. And I'm going to add that NFT to the blockchain and it will be available. So I'm going to just go take a look. We'll visit it. And now you can see it here. Okay. Now this isn't for sale yet. I can, I can sell it by going and clicking on the sell button. Now, if this is the first time you're selling a photo in this collection, you're going to see your Ethereum wallet open up and it's going to ask you to pay some money to sell it. Now, the fee that you're going to need to pay to create your NFT isn't a fee to sell on OpenSea. It's actually a fee to do a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. I know people are going to say, you know, I don't have to pay these types of high fees on other things when I upload photos online. Why do I have to do them on the blockchain? Okay. Now, the reason is, is because those are on centralized servers. Now, the blockchain is a decentralized network. Centralized servers are most of the places that you upload your photos. Okay. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, um, this channel is called Photoloo, but it's because our company is called Photoloo, and we have a software product called Photoloo. What our software product does is allows photographers to upload their photo to Photoloo, and then we distribute them to 13 different sites. So it makes it really easy for photographers to get their photos on a lot of different sites very quickly. Now, we have a free version of that software, and you know, someone, anybody can go and sign up for free for five photos a week, and that is totally free, but all of that is running on servers that we pay for. So though it's free for the free users of the product, you know, we're paying for those servers and we pay for those transactions. And if we get more free users on our service, we need to pay for more, for more servers, right? Obviously we have paid versions as well too, that have no limits and, you know, people pay to have unlimited uploads to Fortaloo and that pays for the free, for the free users and, it, you know, helps us keep the servers running and keep the company going. Now, the blockchain works differently than that. The blockchain is not owned by OpenSea or Rarible or any of these other companies. It's a group of decentralized servers. So anybody can get a computer and add it to the blockchain and start processing these transactions. But why would anybody do that? Why would you, you know, pay for a computer, pay for electricity to add it to the blockchain? Well, because of these gas fees. Because when somebody wants to process a transaction, you're paying for those servers. And the way the blockchain, well, at least the Ethereum blockchain is currently set up, those those fees can be quite high. So when I listed my first photo for sale originally, it cost me $85 to list that for sale on OpenSea. Right? Now it does go by the collection, so there are ways that you can decrease your gas fees, and I'll talk a bit about that later in the video. But just know that if you're setting up your own collection now, and you're doing it for the first time, following along with me, you're going to have to pay a gas fee, although you won't see me do it as I go and set up my NFT on OpenSea right now, because I've already paid it. So let's go and take a look at how you can sell your photos on OpenSea. So coming back to my NFT, I've got it created here, but now I want to go here and sell it. So I'm going to click on the sell button. Now there's a number of different options for selling. Okay. I'm going to go through them all. The first one is set price. So you can go through here and I can make this 
okay, which I think is like about a thousand Canadian dollars right now, maybe a bit less than that. This is all going to be based in Ethereum. Now you can choose different currencies, but there's only a couple of them that you can use. And I think it all pretty much just gets translated to Ethereum in the end. Okay. So that would be just having it as a set price and anybody can go and buy it at that price. Now, another thing that you can do is choose an ending price. So what this will do is if I put 0.5 and 0.1, right, then I can choose an expiration date. And I've been using one of like, you can choose a specific date. I think all my NFTs that I have with dates right now, I put them as May 1st. And then what will happen is today it will be on sale for 0.5, but then it will slowly go down in price up until May 1st and the end price will be 0.1. Okay, so this is a way that you can set it high and then people can watch it and it gets down to a reasonable price and they would go and buy it. So that's another way that you can go through and sell them is based on a declining sale, all right? The next way you can do it is based on the highest bidder, all right? So you can have a minimum bid, let's say 0.5 and then have a reserve price, okay? Now, the one limitation with this is that on auction, the reserve price is one Ethereum, okay? One Ether. And that right now is around $2,000, okay? So if you wanted to sell something for less than $2,000 or if you're willing to accept less than $2,000 for your photo, this isn't a really good option because people can't bid less than $2,000. Okay? So in this particular photo, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a starting price of one ether and then I'll have an ending price of 0.1, right? And I'll have an expiration date of, uh, of two months and that's it. I can go through here and I'm going to post my listing. Once I get through and put this on, it's going to ask me to sign it, which I will. And now it's going to be in and it's added to my collection where I can go through and see that photo. But that's it. Now you know how to create NFTs. You can go through and create more NFTs for your other photos. The only question is, is will anybody buy them? One of the things to note is that there isn't really a large marketplace right now for photos to be sold as NFTs. So if you want to sell your NFTs, you're really going to need to promote them probably on social media. Now, one of the things to note is that these NFTs are built on a technology called smart contracts and NFTs is really in its infancy right now. Um, I really think that smart contracts and the technology around NFTs, even if these NFTs don't completely change, you know, photography business, I am strongly believe that smart contracts will. One of the reasons is, is because most sales um, for photography are digital these days, meaning that when photographers are selling their photos, they're selling them as digital files. And it's basically, you know, contracts for digital assets. And photography is very unique in that sense. Now, obviously, there are certain types of photography where prints are very important. So like for wedding photography and portrait photography. But a lot of the photography industry is delivering digital files for a particular contracted price. And that's where smart contracts really shine. So I think that, you know, even if NFTs don't change every photographer's workflow, smart contracts are going to change everybody's workflow. Well, at least everybody who makes money with their photography's workflow as the technology progresses and becomes more mature. Now, I don't want to get into smart contracts in a ton of detail. I could do a whole other video on that. If that's something you're interested in, just let me know in the comments. I can consider creating a video on smart contracts in the future. But one of the things to note is that smart contracts are just digital contracts that are enforceable by code. So they have a lot of applications, especially when you're dealing with digital assets like digital photographs. And they're really in their infancy right now, but it's not too hard to see how they can change the photography industry going forward. Okay, so this isn't something that's going to happen immediately. I don't say think that every, you know, photographer is going to be using smart contracts by the end of this year. But I think of it kind of the way that I think about mirrorless, mirrorless cameras, right? When mirrorless cameras came out, they were in most ways inferior to the DLSLR digital cameras of the time. The reason was is because so much time and effort had been put into building DSLR cameras, right? But having a mirror in there was completely unnecessary. The actual basics of the design for mirrorless cameras was better. Like if you were creating a mirrorless uh, camera today, nobody would think, hey, 
I'm going to take all this digital stuff and put a mirror in there and make it move, right? It was, it was silly. It was left over from the film days, but it was the easiest way to get digital sensors into cameras. And when the mirrorless cameras came out, they were inferior. But as more and more time and research and development got put into mirrorless cameras, they eventually got to the point where I think today mirrorless cameras are superior to DLSLRs in most ways. And it's very easy to see today how at some point in the future, mirrorless cameras will be superior to DSLRs in every way. Okay. Smart contracts are kind of the same, you know, there's so much built up and there's so much infrastructure and R and D effort built into the current way that contracts and selling photos works is that they're going to take a bit of time to get put up. But as there's more re research and development put into it, as more and more pe people work on fixing solutions like the high cost of the gas prices on the Ethereum network, I can totally see how in 10 years time, every professional photographer is going to be working with smart contracts in some way or another. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. Think about a company like Getty Images. Okay. Getty Images has hundreds of thousands of contracts. They've got hundreds of thousands of contracts with different photographers to purchase their work and resell it to buyers where they've got contracts with those buyers. And Getty has a ton of different employees and has a ton of different computer servers and has a ton of different research and development built into the fact that they can sell photos, they go through, process it, take a massive cut of that sale, and then give a small portion of it back to the photographer. That is one of those processes that could be done by a smart contract significantly more efficiently. And because it was done by a smart contract more efficiently, the photographer could end up with a much larger portion of the sale of the photo. Okay. So that's just kind of one example of how I see smart contracts could be used in the future. Now, another example that is a bit more abstract, but is also totally doable with the technology, and again, not the way it is today, but with more research and development, is to have like one central repository of photos, and then basically have all the sites that use those photos use them via a smart contract. Like if you think about the things, the way things work today, you know, I go and I create a photo on my computer and I upload that photo to multiple sites. Now I use our photo do software to do that. So I can take one photo and I can upload it to 13 sites in a matter of minutes, but you know, it's still inefficient, right? Why have that one photo sitting on 13 different centralized servers? right? Another option would be is you could have like a universal file storage, right? That photo could serve on one server and then a photographer could give Instagram permission to show that photo and give Shutterstock permission to sell that photo at a different price via smart contracts. And this is so much more of an efficient system, right? You know, having that photo in one spot and then having, you know, how that photo can be used by all these different websites that want our photos done via smart contracts. And depending on how that's implemented, it could be implemented in a way that would be significantly beneficial to photographers. So I strongly believe that, you know, blockchains, NFTs, smart contract technology is totally going to change the way that photographers do business in the future. And at Fortaloo, we are actively doing research and development into how we can use these technologies to kind of shift the photography business away from these large companies and bring the relationship back to the photographers. And by doing this, we really think that we can bring a lot of the profit back to photographers too, when they're selling their images. So though we see a lot of ways this technology can change the photography industry, the one that we're focusing on right now is the sale of rights managed photos and videos. So if you sell your photos uh, as right managed photos and videos, we would love to hear from you. And especially if you're willing to be a bit of a guinea pig for this technology, you can head over to uniquestock.io. I'll put a link to that down in the description and just go and sign up there. And there's a way you can let us know that you sell your images as rights managed. Also, if you're a purchaser of rights managed image, or if you commission um, photography or videography work, um, we've already talked to a lot of buyers, we would love to talk to more, you can also fill in on that form. And if you're just interested in this technology and how things are going to go, right, again, right now, we're really focusing on photographers who sell rights managed images, either through an agency or directly. But we do, you know, hope to open this up to the general photographer 
photographers and really build a way that any photographer can use contracts to make more money from their photography. So you can go over to uniquestock.io, join the mailing list, and you know, you'll be the first ones to know as we release new features that will probably be built into For Lube, and there's also gonna be other features that will be kind of more marketplaces where people can buy them. And this is gonna solve a lot of the problems that we have with the technology right now, especially around the gas prices, right? And the price to be able to list things. There are solutions out there for that, and that's what we're kind of focusing on so that we can kind of move things forward for the blockchain technology and the photography community. Community. So joining the mailing list is the best way to keep up on all of our blockchain related work, um, but also make sure you subscribe to the channel, right? On this channel, I talk about making money with your photography. So if that interests you at all, probably does if you made it this far in the video, make sure you go down and subscribe. Also, if you haven't tried Photoloo yet, if you're interested in making money, Photoloo can upload your photos to 13 different sites. Again, it's still in the centralized server model, but when we do add the features to upload to the blockchain, in the short term, we'll probably need to keep them on centralized servers, pushing them to the blockchain. That'll be done via Photoloo. So if that interests you at all, you can go in and sign up for a free version. I'll put a link up here somewhere where you can go and try it out. Best of luck selling your photos online.